Hey guys, it's Tyler with TCG Rewind. Today I'm bringing you another deck profile. Um, this time we're going to be talking about X Sabers, which in my opinion, it's honestly my favorite deck of the September 2011 format. And I also think it's like pretty critically underrated. I know most people would probably rank it like tier one or even like slightly below that. Um, but I think this deck is incredibly strong with the right build. And honestly, I think the build I have here, um, this isn't the one on the website, but this is, in my opinion, like the strongest way to build X Sabers. Um, I absolutely love playing this deck. Um, and like my favorite thing about it is literally all of the monsters in the archetype are good. Like every single monster you run has a really good effect. And we'll get more into that once we go into the deck profile. So I'll just get started here. Time warp, go! So we have two X Saber Faltrol. So Faltrol says if you control two X Sabers, you can special summon it. You run two instead of three because three, it gets kind of bricky. And honestly, you don't want to commit to summoning this unless you're going for like a big combo or something like really rewarding. Like this card is really risky to put on the board. So nine times out of 10, you're holding onto this card until like the exact opportune moment where you know this can resolve. So you run two for that exact reason because like anytime you're dropping it, it's probably an overextension unless you're in the right situation. And those situations kind of take time to build up. So you really don't want to see too many of these. You want to search it at the right opportune time. Um, and that's why we run two of them. Then we have one X Saber Bogart Knight. This is honestly all you need. This card on its own isn't very good um, because all this does really is set you up for summoning a fall troll, right? It's effect is you can special an X Saber from your hand. Um, and it's other part of its effect is it can only synchro into an X Saber monster. So if you're playing, um, <clears throat> so if you like want to summon this and like special a tuner, you have to go into any of your X Saber synchros, which aren't always the best play. Um, and so I typically don't think that this is like the best card. I basically run it as a one of one because it's 19. So it can out Thunder King, like through crashing. Um, but two, it also has, um, like, it has your setup for Fall Troll when you're in a later stage of the game. So it's like a nice search for later in the game, um, but you really don't care to see this early. It doesn't really do anything much on its own. Um, <clears throat> and then this is literally the best card in the deck. So we run three uh, Full Helm Knight. And the thing about Full Helm Knight is it has multiple effects, right? So the first one, which I think a lot of people know, is when you, like, when your opponent declares an attack you can like target that monster and negate that attack so um he can like protect himself or other things on the field really really like nice effect that actually comes up quite a bit um and people honestly just forget about it like you put this thing on the field and they're like try to swing over it and then do something later you just go like you negate the attack and then yeah they it, it puts them in weird positions so yeah this card is is excellent but then the other part of the effect that makes this card just so ungodly broken is um, if it destroys a defense position monster, um, doesn't even have to send a grave, just destroys a defense position monster, um, you get to special summon an X Saber, a level four lower X Saber from your grave. That even includes if this card like leaves the field. So like if you swing into a Raikou and they pop your full Helm Knight, full Helm Knight's effect will still trigger in the graveyard and you can bring himself back. So like this card is really strong like it's really easy to resolve this especially with other cards you run in the deck that like supplement like the activation of this ability but this is like bread and butter your opponent has a thunder king you econ it to defense attack over bring back a monster you can go for a synchro play right like there's so many versatile ways to use the effect to bring something back um which is why you max out on this card and it's honestly just so good like i like Whenever I search a card in the end phase with Dark Souls, if I have nothing, if I'm not sure what I want, I'll always default to this card, just because it has the most playmaking ability. Okay, then we run three Emmer's Blade. This is basically a giant rat, but better. Um, its effect is when it's destroyed by battle, you can special summon a level four lower X Saber monster from your deck. Nice thing about it is, is it doesn't force you to put it in attack position like giant rat does. 
So you can like summon a Dark Soul or it, like basically this card, people probably think of it as just like a basic recruiter card. But honestly, I like to think of this card as if my opponent has a monster with over 1300 attack, this searches anything in my deck. Um, and honestly, like I can't tell you how many plays you make with this deck just by crashing into their monster. Like for example, let's say they had a Thunder King in attack position and you have an Econ and an Emmer's Blade. You can crash the Emmer's Blade, get a Full Helm Knight, and then Econ their Thunder King to defense, attack, and bring the Emmer's Blade back. It's like, it's so, so powerful if you think about it in terms of it accesses everything in your deck. This is such a powerful card, such an important card to run at three. And then, honestly... This is probably the second best card in the deck, if not the only thing that makes this deck function. So maybe it is the best card. I don't know. This card is so good. Uh, we run three Dark Soul. So if you don't know, in September 2011, for the like era or the time frame that people typically play the format, which is around YCS Columbus, um, Dark Soul was ruled where each time it's sent to the graveyard, um, you get a search for each time it was sent that turn so like if you synchro with it and then bring it back and then synchro with it again then in the end phase you get a search twice um which is absolutely insane like i yeah i mean <laughs> i i've said this in another video in my tier list video but literally nothing feels better then end phase triggering dark soul and then chain link 2 triggering that same dark soul like it, it's so so powerful um, that, that double search effect doesn't come up a whole lot in the deck, but what I really like about this is since it doesn't search immediately, it searches in the end phase. It, it like creates certain things where like, again, it plays around Thunder King really nicely. Like if you put like, you know, synchro with it into a monster, even if they Thunder King negate your synchro in the end phase, you're still going to get to search. So it, it's just really, really powerful all around, but also this card being like generic synchro fodder, it's easy to revive in the deck. It basically means like almost every synchro play you make is virtually being done with a Sangin, which means your deck is constantly moving and it's really easy to build advantage through abusing this card. And then the last deck saver, you saw me flash them earlier, but uh, three Pashual. So <laughs> this card is this card is also crazy for an archetype card. It's literally Spirit Reaper, but a level two tuner. And it's an earth tuner, which means with Dark Soul, it makes a Nat Beast. So you, you can make a, a Nat Beast using this card, but also it's an excellent stall tool. Like during your opponent's standby phase, if it's face up in defense, then you, you take a thousand life points. So it's pretty easy to upkeep that cost for a while, but at the bare minimum, like it's not going to trigger until after it's been flipped on your opponent's turn and all the way back to your turn if you have to leave it then you're gonna take a thousand. And it's only if it's in a defense, you can technically switch it to attack to prevent that, but um, that's a rare scenario where that like comes up. But regardless, like, yeah, it literally can't be destroyed by battle. Level two tuner, I, like, it's just so crazy. It's so, such a good card. And then we're moving on to outside of the archetype cards. So we run a single copy of Gores and not a lot of builds ran this card. I chose to run it because I am opting to not run a lot of traps. And when you're not running a lot of traps, you're relying on cards like Max C and Effect Veiler to, um, to like interrupt your opponent's plays. But that means when you're running Max C, you do need to have Gores to prevent OTK. So this card is really important to run um, just because of the fact that you need something there to threaten if they are going to OTK you or something. Um, so yeah, basically they can't take the max C challenge, right? Um, then we run two giant rap. Uh, I like you could go to three, but this card's honestly kind of cloggy. I mean, it's not nearly as good as the other ones because it's not an X saber name. So like it, it'll get you pr pretty much anything in your deck, which is really nice. But do you necessarily need to max out on it? Probably not. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's why it's at two. Still a really powerful card in the deck. All right, and then we have a single copy of Super Nimble Mega Hamster. The only target this card can get is Dark Soul. But in my opinion, 
I, I've almost debated on running Foolish Burial just to get Dark Soul in your graveyard so you can start recycling it with like full Helm Knights and stuff like that. Like this card is so, so good. Um, which is why I think that it's important to like find, have more ways to search it out. I don't think people expect to run into like Mega Hamster. And so like this, getting this for free, that means like if they attack into it on their turn and you get this, then you could like flip this up and normal summon out a Pashul. And then you have Trishula right there with an end phase search, which is, you know, uh, that's also pretty good. Um, okay, but yeah, moving on to the hand traps. We run two of each. This is kind of a standard package for most 2011 decks if you're opting to go for running hand traps. Uh, we run two Maxi and then two Veilers. Um, basically, again, I'm not running trap cards, so these need to like supplement like interrupting my opponent's plays. For the most part, X Saber monsters are so like inherently powerful that they can deal with a lot of your opponent's boards. What they really struggle with is dealing with back row, which is why you'll see the rest of the deck is kind of working around that. So these are just nice cards to have in your hand. Another thing nice about Max C is it's a level two earth. So with one of your level three tuners, you can make a Nat Beast if you really had to, if it's like super dead. Um, doesn't come up too much, but can. All right, now we're on to the spells. So there's gonna be a lot of spells again, cause I, I don't opt to run a lot of traps. So we have one Monster Reborn, one Dark Hole, one Heavy Storm. These are all pretty common. I mean, don't need an explanation. They're just really good. Um, we have one mind control. You run a lot of tuners and it definitely comes up to take your opponent's monsters. Um, we run one level limit area B. Now this is something I got from a list that was played at YCS Kansas City. The cool thing about this card is you can use it to switch all of your opponent's monsters to defense position, which since none of your monsters or majority of your monsters aren't level four, this card doesn't affect you, which means you can have an attack position full Helm Knight, which is level three, and you can start attacking over your opponent's monsters to like to get stuff back and build advantage. Like if you flip this on a Tengu and you have like a f decently full graveyard, then like full Helm Knight is gonna be able to crash into that Tengu every turn and that Tengu is gonna be stuck in defense. So like you can like keep bringing back monsters. And then as soon as you're ready, you can synchro into Hunway and you can pop some of their back row and you can also pop this to turn it off because this thing can pop up to three spell and trap cards. So like you have a way to turn this off for yourself. So this is just a way to claw back into the game if you fall behind in like pressure. All right, and then we run one book of moon. Again, switching your opponent's monsters to defense is like really strong in this deck. So obviously this is a really versatile card, um, but being able to like, abuse your full Helm Knight's effect to bring stuff back from Grave. It's like the key thing of this deck. Um, okay, and then this card is also really important. Again, since I'm not running a lot of traps, um, you need responses to like natural board wipe. So Torrential is a huge problem for this deck. Bottomless is a huge problem for this deck. And even like Dark Hole is a huge problem for this deck. So my body's a shield. You run two of these. This plays around that so nicely. Um, one, people don't expect it. This card isn't like super commonly played, but two, um, you can set it. And then like when you have like a big board of X savers, but really no negation, um, they can try to dark hole and then this can blow your opponent out. Th this card is just so versatile. And I think it's like critically important to run in this deck strictly because of the fact that you can't really deal with torrential very well. Um, and yeah, then we run two creature swap. You're running five recruiters in the deck. So, you know, th this comes up to make a lot of plays, stealing your opponent's monsters. I think theoretically you could maybe cut this to one, but it is still a really, really strong card. And it's a nice way to like force your recruiters to get what you want in the event that your opponent is like playing really passive or something, not trying to attack stuff. So yeah. And then lastly, uh, the best spell card in the deck easily, uh, triple econ. This card is so versatile. Uh, you can steal your opponent's monsters, tribute to Dark Souls, steal one of their monsters, or better yet, you can just switch their opponent to your opponent's monsters to defense and swing over it with full Helm Knight. So like, uh, yeah, there's so many ways in which this is good. There's also like, I mean, people who run Econ, uh, especially in this format, know 
um, that there's a lot of scenarios where your opponent has like a single monster, they're low life, and you just tribute like an effect veiler or anything random, steal their monster and attack them for game. Um, happens a lot when you run a card like this. So maxing out on it is really important. I don't think you could ever drop that ratio down. This card's so good on the deck. All right, and then we run five traps, all right? So we run two Gotham's Emergency Call. This card is really, really good. Um, it says if you control an X-Saber, you can target two X-Sabers in your graveyard and special summon them. So, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I don't think I need to explain why that's so good. But the key thing to know about this card is if you're going to use it, try using it during your opponent's end phase. Most of your X-Saber monsters can stick on the field when they're face up on your opponent's turn. So... Um, it's chainable if they try to MST it or something, but the best part about it is like you, if you use it during your opponent's end phase, they can't like torrential you or anything like that. And if it resolves and you're bringing back dark souls and stuff, if they use back row on you on like your following turn where you're making your synchros, you don't really care. So yeah, we run two of these. You don't run three because it's too cloggy at three. You need time to set up your graveyard. Um, so two is the perfect number again. And also the last card kind of explains why you don't want to run other traps and it's we main deck triple royal decree so reason for this is the deck literally just like in as far as like explosiveness goes it can deal with pretty much any board that most like decks can build i think like agents is probably the only deck that can give this like a run for your money as far as like things you can do but like decree basically like, I can't tell you how many times when I played this deck in tournament where I would just end phase decree my opponent in game one and it, they just, like, couldn't do anything. Like, <laughs> they would just lose to it. Um, this card is so powerful, especially because, like, in more modern iterations of 2011, people try to, like, splash in vanities and stuff like that into their decks. This just makes that not a problem at all. So, um, like, and then especially if you go against any, like, of the main, like, back row decks in the format so like tgs for example go against tg or hero stun or something like that main decking three of these basically means game one is yours um and again like if you ever can resolve hunley or anything like that um that you know most of those decks are just gonna <laughs> lose to it so yeah we definitely want to run royal decree honestly i this build is based on the floater x saber deck which was that uh list from ycs kansas city I didn't want to use my personal list, but I personally think this build is a bit better strictly because of the fact that I think hand traps are really important uh, when you're turning off back row. But I, I do believe that the best way to play X Sabers is by maining three decree. I don't I don't think they're I don't think you should play like a trap variant. I think triple decree makes X Sabers thrive so much better than any other way. Um, all right, and then we'll go into the extra deck. So we're going to start with, we run a single Ally of Justice Catasaur. Um, this is just a, you know, best generic level five synchro in the game. Um, we run a single copy of Nat Beast. So this also goes back into why we run three copies of, um, why we run three copies of Pashul. Because if you make like synchro into Nat Beast with Pashul Dark Soul, you get the search in the end phase, of course, but also if you have Decree, now you've turned off your opponent's spells and traps. So that can be a win con in itself, and it's really, really strong, and it's really easy to do in this deck. So, um, yeah, so Nat Beast is a very strong card in this deck. It is so easy to bring out. It is such a powerhouse uh, being able to turn off your opponent's spells. All right. Uh, then level six synchros there are a lot of these and that's because like your most common synchro play is going to be full helm knight plus dark soul like nine times out of ten that's what you're doing so we run Brianak, no brainer like best generic rank six or level six um orient dragon not a lot of builds run this card but i think it's essential i think this card is so nice like when you're going against your like a tengu plant player or something like that and they make a synchro board and Honestly, it feels really, really good to not have to pitch to remove their card. Like with, like where Brian Ack, you'd have to pitch a card. With Orient Dragon, you just synchro, you banish an end phase, search with Dark Soul, 
Um, and then it's a really nice ladder card into like level eight synchros or something with like, you know, Pashul or whatever. So yeah, I think this card is like absolutely essential for X Sabers. I think it's so, so good at dealing with what your opponent tries to do, especially in this meta game where synchros are obviously very popular. Okay, and then we max out Triple Hunley. And the reason for this is <clears throat> honestly, there's a lot of games where you just burn through them all. Like, I, I can't tell you how many times you just synchro into six to Hunley to even pop a single back row just to get value, even if you, like, actually, like, even if they're gonna, like, you know, chain a bottomless or something, who cares? Like, you're doing this to blow through back row and then you have the security of searching with Dark Soul after you synchro for it, typically. So, yeah, I mean, plus you also needed to turn off your own cards, like, uh, level limit area B. Um, you, you also cannot go lower than three of this card. It, it is so pr important. And you also don't run any recursion in the build. So like you don't run Pot of Avarice or anything like that. So without Pot of Avarice, you need to max out on this card. Uh, the last one is Naturia Barkion. Um, with Decree main deck, this card is like, it feels okay. Um, but there are worlds where you don't see Decree and you can just make this uh, as a generic way to like deal with your opponent's trap cards. Um, honestly, there's a lot of times where I want to make a generic level six synchro, um, but I don't want to just make a Hunley because like, I'd rather save Hunley for later. So like, or maybe there's not a back row to pop. So it just feels like you're losing value in that scenario. I'll typically just make a Barkion and that's like 2,500 attack, good beater, you know, difficult to deal with, but yeah, for the most part, it's not super, it's like not essential, but it is essential if that makes sense. Okay, um, Xaver Urabellum. So this card is weird. Um, you really don't want to run this card, but at the same time you do. Um, that's strictly because like, one, it's an Xaver. So that means your Gotham's emergency calls are live with this. So in a world where you mind control an opponent's monster, you can synchro into this and it's generic. And then now you have like a way to use Gotham's, which is really nice. I mean, it's effect for like hand control isn't that bad if you don't know it basically says if it inflicts battle damage while your opponent has four or more cards in hand they have to put one like a random one on top of their deck so it's like a pseudo yada lock i guess i mean i don't know it's not really a yada lock at all it's pretty easy to play around but um it does it, it is like an essential option for going into level sevens especially when running cards like um bogart knight because since this can only go into X Saber Synchros, you like use Bogart Knight and then you like summon out your um, Full Helm Knight and then you Synchro and make your Bellum, right? Like that that's the only target for it, um, which is like a common scenario that like can come up. So you kind of have to run this card. And again, the fact that it has an okay effect doesn't make it that bad. Um, Black Rose Dragon, uh, this card is, you know, it, it's like one of the best synchros in the game um really good comeback tool uh stardust shouldn't really need to be explained this is like really relevant in this deck because there's a lot of ways for you to climb the ladder from like a six synchro to an eight synchro um and then this can protect your boards so, like you have a nat beast or something you can protect it or um yeah i mean it, it's just really good um then we have scrap dragon pretty standard one copy of trishula um yeah, this, this doesn't need an explanation. I honestly technically cut Trishula in the last tournament I played in exchange for a Chimera Tech main deck, but I didn't really see a lot of value from doing that, so I decided to just put this back in inside the Chimera Tech. But um, th this like doesn't come up a lot. If it does, you're probably already in a very winning position. But like if you can like get, you know, a a dark double dark soul and like a full helm then you know trishing and then searching two cards uh, that feels pretty good so um yeah it, it's still worth playing i'd say uh then gotham's so this card can it's like one of the only synchro monsters that can synchro with multiple tuners um and he doesn't need like two or more like trishula does so you just need like a level three x saber and then a level six x saber or something like that and you can you can make this card so um or earth monster so technically you can make this with like barky on and a <laughs> full helm knight or something but yeah for the most part 
Um, this card is really good because it has a non-once-per-turn non effect to tribute a next saber, take a card out of your opponent's hand. So there is like a weird hand loop with this deck. Um, I don't run the card to make that work um, because it's like a very win-more situation anyway. But um, this card is really nice. It also has 3,100 attack, so it beats over most things in the metagame. Like it's really nice out to Hyperion or something like that if your opponent has one, um, just because its attack is so high. Um, but yeah, the second effect to like pick cards out of your opponent's hand when you have like fall trolls on field and you can like keep bringing back dark souls and ripping a card and searching feels really, really good. And then the last card we run a single copy of Utopia. Um, only reason for this is in the event that you econ or mind control like a Tengu or something and you can like make a level for a rank four, it's worth it just so you can like steal that Tengu and like not let them search. Um, it rarely ever comes up, but I do think it's essential to run at least one level four exceed just to like deal with Tengu because Tengu is a pesky card for this deck. All right, then we'll go on to the side deck. So the side deck, obviously I already said I moved Chimera Tech to the side. Um, so that's supplemented with two Cyber Dragon. This is for a Car Curry matchup. Um, also Cyber Dragon in general is just a really nice generic card to side in. Like, if you have dead cards versus a matchup, you can just always put this in. It's a nice 2100 beater, extra summon, um, can bait back row or th like force Thunder Kings. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's worth citing these. Then we have two Thunder King. You put this in versus like TGs or going first versus Tengu Plants. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of the best cards in the format. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's not much explanation. Uh, we side the third maxi. I know it's not ulti, don't flame, but you know, we don't got three, we got two. Two's all you need, really. But um, you side this in in the event that you're um, playing against something like Tengu Plants or something like that, or going second against like agents and you just want to like turn off their plays. So, yeah, it feels really good to play. Um, I think it's like important that you're maining or siding a combination of three maxi um, in this format. Then we side two DD Crow. Um, this is just a versatile card that deals with a lot of different decks. You can side it in against plants to snipe their tuners, but the main reason I have this in here is it's like a Dark World answer in the event that you run into Dark World that also doesn't, um, that also is like generic to other decks, right? So like, um, like Dark World is crippled without Grapha, so you can side this in really good. Um, then I made some adjustments from like my tournament. I decided to add Leeching. This is more generic for if you run into agents. At the tournament I played in, there weren't a lot of agent players, so I wasn't worried about it. But um, but yeah, Leeching is just a really powerful card to deal with agents. Then we have a few trap cards. So when you're playing Decree main deck, if their deck doesn't rely on back row, a lot of times they're gonna side out their back row hate. Um, which means you could then side out your decrees and side in some like back road cards So we run two warning and a torrential. I had judgment in the first time, but I realized like I couldn't really justify putting judgment in like it just felt like really weird to add It's like an okay card, but like like I mean, it's like a really good card But it honestly felt kind of weird to side for specific matchups like you're just you're siding it in to deal with anything right? I, I don't know. It, it just it, it felt kind of weird. So um, Warning and Torrential were the best ones because I feel like these are the cards that will catch your opponent off guard the most and obviously cost the least. And then lastly, we just run two Debunk. Um, this is for going like first against like plants or something like that um, because typically you're not like popping off hard on your first turn. It's like more of like turn two or three where you're really getting to do stuff. So like setting debunk not only is it nice for like the dark world matchup to get banished graphos but it's really nice to play around max c in the later parts of like game two or three you can just you know negate the max c um which can let you pop off so i think this card is worth citing in uh in certain circumstances but yeah anyway that wraps it up for this deck profile on the deck Obviously, this is the only place you can find this build because I won't be having adding it to the website since so it's so similar to the floater build that's on that topped YCS Kansas City. But um, I do think this is the best way to play the deck, and I think the deck is beyond tier one. I, I, I think it's 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 right up there with plants and agents. I think it's equally as strong, especially with the Dark Soul ruling. I, I, I just feel like this deck can do so much. 
it just really comes down to the right build and i think this build is really really good like i, I really wouldn't change anything about it so yeah that is it for this deck profile thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you guys have a great time doing today